What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use the photo match tool to create a model in SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so in this video we're going to use photo match to model a chair from a picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set my uh, I'm going to set my scene up so that I can use the photo to model from. So what I have is I just have an image of a chair that I want to model. And so in order to turn on the match photo tool, you're just going to go up to the camera toolbar. You're going to go to match new photo. And you can delete out the default model if you want to. But you can just go up to camera, match new photo, and then go find your image of whatever you want to model. In this case, what I have is I have this image of a chair just a regular chair. I think I got it off of Popular Woodworking's website, but there's a ton of different chairs in this style. I think this is called a Morris chair, but um, just a very simple chair. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click open. And then when I click open, you can see what this does is it brings this chair in and it's kind of intimidating looking um, when you first bring this in. Don't worry about that for right now. It's not nearly as intimidating as it looks. So basically what this is, is this is set up so that you can set up your axes so that they're aligned with this image to make it easier to model in here. And so all you're going to do is you're just going to take the red and green lines and you're just going to line them up with the perspective lines along this image. So in this case, like the red, for example, the red axis would run along this line right here and along this line, and then the green would run along this one. So you're going to set up your... Uh, your axes that way. And so you can see all I'm doing is I'm just I'm just clicking and dragging these little boxes so that they line up with perspective lines. And one thing you may want to do when you first set up your model is you probably want to select something that has a good angle. So you don't want to view that straight on. You want something that has a very pronounced um, something that has very pronounced perspective lines. So this one's a good one because it's really easy for me to come in here and pick out these lines. that my perspective is along. So you can see how now that I've got this kind of aligned here, um, you can see how this axis is kind of running along. Um, this green axis is running along the perspective lines this way, and the red is running along the perspective lines this way. So in a lot of the time, it kind of helps if you can make these as long as possible. Um, so don't come in here and do like a super short line in here because it can kind of, you see how easy it is to kind of skew your perspective. You want to make sure this is running as far along these lines as possible to make sure your alignment is um, the best that you can get. And then the other thing you can do is you can come in here and you can adjust where your origin point's going to be. And so in this case, what I want is I want my origin point to be on this back leg back here. And then once I've got, got all of that in there, once I've got this kind of set up, what I can do is I can just go over to the match photo section of my outliner or uh, of my uh, tray. And this is where you can kind of adjust some of the stuff in here. But you can see how, you know, there, there's a few different things you can change with the planes and everything else. But in this case, you can see how you can turn these planes kind of on and off to kind of see a little bit better the way this is all working. But in this case, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to click done. And so now that I've clicked done, you can see how what I can do is I can come in here and I can actually model... on top of this image and you can see how everything is kind of lined up now so you can see how when I model this is actually in place right here so I can come in here and I can draw rectangles along each one of these legs and I can just really quickly and easily model something based on what I'm seeing in the image so I can kind of push pull things and adjust different things and so what this is doing is this is basically letting me use the image as kind of a reference and so if I want to, I can actually use the orbit tool and kind of rotate around to kind of see what I'm doing, make sure everything's kind of lined up, that sort of thing. And then to go back to your image, you can see how as soon as you came in here and you added a match photo, it added a scene. Well, you can click on this little tab and it'll take you back to your photo match view. So you can come in here and you can adjust. You can fly around, you can look at your view, you can do all those different things. And, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to model all these parts and pieces. And, uh, you know, one of the things that it's kind of important that you do is you make sure everything's kind of lined up in here. 
And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start from this back point and we're just going to just kind of model everything. So in this case, you, you have to think about what you're doing a little bit. So in this case, I picked an eight inch wide line. Well, I'm thinking this is probably gonna be a square piece. And so I'm just gonna model that square piece and I'm gonna push pull it up um, to whatever height that I think it needs to be. So in this case, I'm gonna push pull that up and we'll just go with just this general height for right now. Well, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. So instead of coming in here and trying to model this again, I'm gonna go ahead and assume everything is kind of based on that, on that eight inch by eight inch piece of wood. So, and if I copy this along the red axis, then that means everything's kind of staying aligned. So that's kind of what we want, is we want everything to be aligned in here. So, because when we're done with all this, we want everything to be lined up. We want this to actually be a usable model. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So just tap the M key, click on this corner point, and then tap the control key to activate copy mode. And I'm just gonna move this down here. And once I move that down here, I can come in here and I can actually adjust this because you can see how one piece of this is a little taller than the other piece. So I can actually come in here and I can model these as different pieces. And if you remember what we've talked about before, we need to use smart modeling practices. And when we talk about smart modeling practices, what that means is you're gonna wanna make sure that you model this using components. So like for example, this side and this side are the same. So there's no reason to come in here and try to model this twice. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna model one side of this and then we're just gonna make a copy across here. And the other thing we can do is we can start naming everything and organizing everything as we go. So, and you don't have to do this, but this is the way that I do things. And if you remember, we wanna model all of these using components because there's multiple copies of it. So in this case, I would select that object, I would right click on it and I would create a component and I would call this front leg. And you can see how that's gonna show up in my outliner as front leg. Well then I'll take this one, do the same thing, and we'll call it back leg. So now, a little later on, when I group everything, I can just make a copy along the axes here. So now if I decide, for example, to make a change on this one, like maybe make this a little bit taller, let's say I assume this is a little bit taller, you can see how this one adjusted with that one because I've modeled it using components. So that's the other thing is you can use this image and this image to kind of get an idea of the way everything looks. And it's not gonna be perfect when you model it in photo match, but this is a great way for you to get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna model some more of these parts and pieces and then I'll be back to talk about what I'm doing in a second. All right, so once you've come in here and you've kind of modeled this, what you can do is you can take all these parts and pieces and you can put them in a group. So I'm just holding the shift key and clicking on them. I'm gonna put them all in a group and, uh, or actually you're gonna put them in a component. So you're gonna select all of these, you're gonna right click and you're gonna make those a component. And we'll just call this side assembly. And so you can see how now in your outliner, you can expand or not expand all the stuff from the side assembly. And then you can just kind of take this and all you're gonna do is you're gonna use the move tool in copy mode to copy it across 
and then you can flip it in place. So I use the scale tool. You can also right click and click uh, flip along. But so now this is going to be modeled so that if you change one side, you change the other. So like for example, if you decided to add some kind of like scroll work patterns or like circle cutouts or whatever in here, you can see how since I've modeled everything with components, coming in here and making that change is really easy because this is a copy of this and these are a copy of these so everything adjusts really easy, easily and really quickly. So and sometimes you may kind of have to take some guesses when you're modeling this way. So you may know what the back structure of this chair looks like. I'm not really 100% sure. So in this case, um, I'm just going to kind of draw these vertical supports in here, but you could definitely go back in there and draw those in. But then all we're going to do is we're just going to model our cushions. So in this case, the way our cushions are going to work, and again, you can, you can draw more detail in if you want to. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of draw something in um, to keep us moving. But the way this is going to work is you're just going to be able to come in here and draw a cushion. And you're just going to kind of push pull it up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use an extension that we talked about last week called Round Corner. And uh, I'll link to that in the notes uh, down below and also up above. But basically, Round Corner allows you to come in here and just round off some edges. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Round Corner. And I'm going to round off this top piece. And you can set the offset that you do that at. So in this case, I'm going to set that to 6 inches just because I think that it looks good and it kind of fits. But I'm just going to click on that, and then now, the only thing I don't like about that is it came in here and created a whole bunch of extra geometry. So I just want to make sure that it sets all my edges to softened so that it's not actually creating that geometry. But you can see how now what I have is I have this cushion piece, so I'll just make this a cushion. So you can see how I used round corner to do the same thing up here. So I'll make this the second cushion. So and then the last thing you can do if you want to is you can actually use photo match to apply textures to your model. So in this case I probably wouldn't do that but I can show you how it would work. So in this case what you would do is you would just come over here you'd have match photo active and you would click project textures from photo. And it's going to ask if you want to trim partially visible faces. You can go ahead and say yes. But what that's going to do is that's actually going to take your textures from your image. And you can see how it's actually applying those to this object. So it took the photo texture from that image and it applied that to this object. And maybe we didn't want to select partially. So actually don't select trim partial faces. So all you want to do is you want to select this object, click project textures from photo, say no. And then you can see how this applied those textures to the front side of these faces. And since this was a component, it applied that over here as well. And you can keep doing that for other faces as well. So if you wanted to come in here and do like the back side of this, you could come in here and do that. And you can see how the problem with this is this doesn't always apply. 100% um, smoothly so you do have to be a little bit careful with that but if you just want to pull some quick textures in here this actually does a pretty good job of allowing you to do that. So and you can see how you get a little bit of a problem here a little bit of a problem here but again if you just want to do something really quickly um, this works pretty good. That's where I'm going to wrap up today's video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Um, did you like this tutorial? Was it helpful to you? Does it give you some cool ideas? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.